A family shattered by tragedy, but a father shares his private pain with the public. Hear what David Smith says about his wife's stunning admission that she drowned her two toddlers. Unbelievable stories of faith may have you believing in angels as our special report continues. And get the story behind the story as we take you behind the scenes of Scarlet only here on Nightbeat. Live from the Channel 4 studios in Dallas and Fort Worth, this is News for Texas Nightbeat. Susan was a very dedicated, loyal, you know, caring mother. She, you know, she always, always put Michael and Alex's interests first. Surprisingly respectful words from a man whose children were allegedly murdered by their mother. Good evening. A father in pain finally speaks out about the crime that shocked the nation. David Smith breaks his silence with words and photographs. This is the birthday party, Alex's birthday party, you know, was this past August. A father shares the only thing left of his two sons, memories and pictures. This is Alex's yeah. first birthday party, mm -hmm. enjoying his cake. David Smith remembers the happy times he and Susan shared with their children. She always made sure they had, you know, the best that we could provide. She, you know, she was a very good mother. He says their divorce was amicable, even friendly. We, we were okay. In fact, we even took our children before the incident happened. We had, we had just a week earlier took our children together to the local fair, the county fair. So everything, it was fine. There was no, no fighting. Smith says he never doubted Susan's story that the children had been kidnapped. When she finally confessed, he was stunned. I heard about it on, on national television, about the alleged confession. You didn't hear about it until you saw the news? Mm, that's correct. And you had no idea? That's correct. Since then, he's had to endure his children being pulled from a nearby lake and buried at a local cemetery. I haven't had time to come together with feelings right now. There's so much grief. Do you feel betrayed? Not so much as betrayed, it's just, just hurt. You know, just, just emptiness. Just a lot of mixed emotions right now, a lot of mixed feelings. How do you feel about Susan? Now that's a very personal question. I'm not going to comment or elaborate on that right now. Do you want to see her? Yes, I do. Do you want to talk to her? Yes, I do. Do you want to ask her any questions? I have some personal questions I would like to ask her just for my own self. But the hardest question David Smith faces is how to live through such a tragedy. I have them to live without my children being there. Not be able to, you know, go through life, you know, not be able to do things with them like I had planned. All the dreams and all the plans that I had made, you know, that's what hurts the most. David Smith says he plans to return to work at a local grocery store in the next few weeks. Susan Smith remains in jail, charged with two counts of capital murder. The mother of two girls killed in a hill country drunk driving crash turns herself into Fort Worth police this afternoon. Shirley Draper was indicted in San Marcos on two counts of injury to a child. Police believe Draper's ex-husband, a convicted drunk driver, had one of his daughters blow into a breathalyzer ignition lock system because he was drunk. Cook ran off a road into a pond near Wimberley back in September. The father, who had twice the legal limit of alcohol in his blood, died along with the two daughters. The father was in the back seat, and the other girl, the 10-year-old, was in the back seat. Yeah. So that time we stayed here, we was probably for about four hours we were staying here investigating everything. And uh, supposedly like that, I didn't see no bottles of liquor or anything in the vehicle. The Hayes County District Attorney says he has information that indicates Draper knew her ex-husband was drunk and would have to have one of the daughters blow into the car's breathalyzer to start it. Draper claims she did not know her husband was drunk. Tougher regulations are in the air tonight for small commuter planes. The National Transportation Safety Board is recommending that small planes be made to meet the same rigid safety standards the large carriers do. Federal regulators say the small planes are safe, but could be a lot safer. The accident rate for commuter airlines continues to be consistently higher than the rate for major airlines. If the FAA adopts the recommendations, pilots of small planes will be restricted in the number of hours they can fly, and regulators will tighten their inspection of those planes. The Dallas Mavericks and Dallas Stars could move west to Arlington. That's what Arlington Mayor Richard Green has in mind. Today, he unveiled a plan to build a $93 million arena near the new ballpark to lure the two teams to Arlington. It is no secret those teams have been shopping around 
trying to get out of Reunion Arena in downtown Dallas. But Dallas is trying to keep them in Big D. If that falls through, Green says, he wants the teams to know that Arlington is ready, willing, and able. For the sixth time this year, the Federal Reserve has boosted interest rates, and outside the Federal Reserve, picketing, hoping to prevent the interest rate hike, is a big one, three quarters of a percentage point. For the average American, that increase means loans for homes and cars will cost more. Tropical Storm Gordon continues to creep through the Gulf of Mexico. Tonight, a tornado drops out of the storm and destroys a trailer park near Barefoot Bay on Florida's eastern coast. The killer twister killed at least one person and blew apart several hundred trailers. South to Fort Lauderdale, a 500-foot freighter is grounded. And in Haiti, four straight days of rain takes a deadly toll. At least 90 people are dead from floods and mudslides. U.S. troops have helped rescue many Haitians trapped by the storm. Now, let's look at more news from around our world in a minute. An earthquake and tidal waves ravaged the central Philippine island of Mindoro, killing more than 60 people, injuring more than 130. Many of the dead were young children who drowned when their homes were battered by 48-foot waves spawned by the quake. Terrified commuters scrambled for cover as a volley of bullets ripped through an overcrowded tram, bringing Sarajevo's morning rush hour to a halt. In Israel, celebrations are held throughout the occupied West Bank and self-rule enclaves to mark Palestinian Independence Day, the anniversary of the Palestinian Declaration of Independence in 1988. In Bonn, Helmut Kohl is swiftly sworn in as German Chancellor, being re-elected earlier today. Back in the U.S., patchy ice causes a 65-car pileup north of Denver. One person is killed, 36 others injured, two critically. And New York's Rockefeller Center has its Christmas tree, originally planted in 1936. The tradition of the tree at Rockefeller Center started in 1931 by construction workers who were celebrating having jobs during the Depression. They'll light the tree on December 2nd, topping off this world in a minute. Toy buying season's just around the corner, so buyer beware. That is the word from the Institute for Injury Reduction. The group released its annual toy safety report today, warning against toys with projectiles that could potentially blind and toys that could lead to choking or strangulation. Choking and strangling injuries lead often to brain damage. If they don't lead to death, they can lead to a life of ruined years for a small child whose mind will never be able to grow further. The group released a list of 25 dangerous toys. Consumers can get a free copy with safety tips by calling this number, area code 301-261-0090. Coming up next week, the Channel 4 Toy Test Countdown begins. We'll show you the best toys of 1994 starting Monday at 5 and 10. He's the man who will oversee what could be the trial of the decade. Now, Judge Lance Ito goes on the record. Hear what he has to say only on Night Beat. And... We describe angels in such a way as to disarm them, to take away the fear, uh, to bring them more to our level. Tonight, my special report, Believing in Angels, continues with a look at how angels appear in places you may not expect. Scarlett O'Hara Butler. The sweeping saga continues. This is Julia Summers. Just ahead on Night Beat, you'll meet the stars behind the spark. Hi, I'm Mike Ducey. Later in sports, the end of an era. One of the greatest athletes of all time calls it quits. That story, plus the Mavericks, trying to extend their early season hot streak against the Heat. Have you noticed that more and more people each year are going into the office less and less? In fact, this year, 40 million Americans will be going home to work in their own home offices. And for all these home professionals, Hewlett Packard has now created the Office Jet. It's a printer, a fax machine, and a copier all in one. And it's so affordable and so complete. All you need is an HP office jet, and you're in business. The high cost of health care? Everyone has a part in keeping it down. So we took what you like about Walmart and what you want in a pharmacy and put it right inside your Walmart store. The result? Walmart's pharmacy department. With professional service and the low price on every prescription. So next time, bring it here. Or ask your doctor to call. Walmart's pharmacy department. Your full service pharmacy right inside Walmart. Always low prices, always Walmart.
luxury car to make you feel better once you get in. But with its unique combination of refined elegance and invigorating BMW performance, the new 7 Series is designed to make you feel better long after you get out. Presenting the BMW of luxury cars. Healthcare solutions so flexible. We finally have a competitive benefits package. Coverage for me and two future employees. Healthcare choices so wide. Over 2,100 doctors. That ours is one of them. Dr. Steve. It's good to see you. Healthcare partnership so impressive. What's your doctor say? Methodist Hospital. You'll see healthcare in a whole new light. Harris Methodist Health Plan. We have a breaking story to tell you about from Grand Prairie. Diesel fuel has apparently spilled from a truck near Six Flags. Sean Rabb joins us live from the command center. And Sean, what's going on there? Uh, Clarice, we are at the intersection of the Great Southwest and Marshall here in Southwest Grand Prairie. The problem tonight is between Southwest Grand Prairie and Southwest Arlington, a potentially dangerous uh, drip of diesel fuel. And to explain what happened is uh, Deputy Chief uh, David Harmon with the Grand Prairie, Assistant Chief David Harmon with the Grand Prairie Fire Department. Uh, Chief, what can you tell us about this uh, diesel fuel that's apparently over several miles in this area? Yes, in the Grand Prairie area, it looks like it's possibly a mile to a mile and a half uh, in uh, length traveling from this location, which is Marshall and Great Southwest, all the way down to Great Southwest in 303, where it appears the vehicle turned around and came back up on the opposite side of the street. So we're talking about a, a truck with saddle tanks, and one of those tanks apparently damaged, yeah. and it's giving up some of that fuel. How potentially dangerous is this event tonight, Chief? Well, the danger is more in the uh, cars maybe getting out of control because of the slick streets and that, uh, not necessarily a flammable danger uh, to the great extent, even though there is that the possibility if there is a spark. So you're actually looking for the guy driving that truck now who may not, obviously doesn't know he has a leak in his gas tank, right? Well, uh, I would assume that he does not know. Uh, we are looking for him. We do have a description of the truck, license number, and a, an eyewitness as to the fact that it was leaking. Uh, he's made a quite an extensive trip through Arlington and left a good 75 to maybe 100 gallons of fuel in their uh, city as, as well. well. All right. That's uh, Chief uh, David Harmon, Assistant Chief David Harmon with the Grand Prairie Police Department. A different type of APB tonight. They're looking for a truck that's given up diesel fuel. Could be kind of dangerous in Grand Prairie and Arlington. Back to you in the studio in downtown Dallas. Are they working on washing it away or putting sand over it, Sean? No, they're not yet washing it away yet, Clarice, and that'll probably take place a little later on. They're not sanding either. It's a real fine mist. In fact, Michael P., if you take a look at it, you really can't see anything on the asphalt in the street here itself, but it's enough to create just a problem if you're going along too fast and you try to stop and you might skid. And, of course, if you have an accident tonight out here and crash and kick some sparks, that could be a dangerous situation. Well, let's hope they can keep it under control and find the person who's driving that truck. Exactly. Thank you, Sean. All right. The family dog will now be entered into evidence in the O.J. Simpson case. Judge Lance Ito approved a court order to get hair samples from Simpson's dog and from his son Jason's dog. And as the prosecution prepares its case, the jury pool seems to be shrinking. Today, several potential jurors were dismissed after making it clear they wanted no part of a long murder trial. Potential jurors are questioned extensively about their opinions of the case and the players. In Los Angeles, Judge Lance Ito is the star of the day. He's featured in a series of exclusive interviews on our sister station, KCBS-TV. Claudia Cotto joins us live from our newsroom with a closer look at the man who will oversee the trial against O.J. Simpson. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Clarice. Judge Lance Ito is, of course, bound by the same restrictions he's enforcing with potential jurors. No discussion of the Simpson case outside the courtroom. But the judge is making some exceptions in this exclusive interview. And tonight, we learn from the judge... Who knows what about that mysterious envelope? The same judge who blasted the excessive media coverage of the Simpson case walked smack into the spotlight when he agreed to do an exclusive interview with KCBS, our sister station in Los Angeles. I have newfound uh, empathy for people like Cher and Madonna who have to put up with this every day. The judge did not discuss his reasons for consenting to speak to a reporter, but in his series of exclusive interviews, he does offer some insight into his background and influences. His parents were imprisoned in an internment camp during World War II. Throughout their lives, they were, unlike him, he points out, deprived of opportunity. I was very fortunate that I grew up assuming that an Asian American could go into the legal system, could be successful, and could be a judge. And now a critical childhood role model is assigned the task of handling the case's most secretive evidence, 
hidden in that mysterious envelope. Delbert Wong, the first Chinese-American to be appointed to judgeship in the United States, was Ito's scoutmaster and his choice of special master. Ito turned to him to guard the envelope, the contents of which remain a mystery. The only person who really knows is Del Wong, since he's the one who put it in the envelope. He hasn't told me. The judge is already looking forward to the end of the Simpson trial and his own return to anonymity. And he jokingly brushes off any suggestion that he has become the most watched jurist in American history. No, that's still Joe Wapner. Joe Wapner will always have that title. And the judge added he feels particularly compelled to do a good job on the bench because his parents are watching him every day on television and have been very hurt by public criticism of his rulings and record. This exclusive interview with Judge Ito continues tomorrow night on Nightbeat. Clarice? Thanks, Claudia. If you're enjoying the miniseries, you'll love seeing what it was like behind the scenes of Scarlet and later. I can feel an angel over me, but and I kind of like turned my head and it wasn't there. And hear more amazing stories from North Texans believing in angels. Hmm, nice pickup. Take off on any new Buick test drive by November 19th and get 1,000 American Airlines Advantage miles. The Buick 1,000-mile test drive at your Buick dealers now. Wow, that was quick. Test drive any new Buick by November 19th and land 1,000 American Airlines Advantage miles. The Buick 1,000-mile test drive at your Buick dealers now. This technology is miraculous. Ever since our head of sales, Curtis the current man Bruno, put our catalog online, he hasn't bothered me once. What's the latest with Darlene? Oh, forget that. Check us out. I can get our entire winter catalog out to 2,000 bookstores just like that. And press this button, you get an entire summary of the book. Just like that. Interactive. Cool. Uh-huh. I love technology. <laughs> Breaking through the line, smoking to the end zone like a runaway train. It's enough to make a guy hungry. Yeah, I'm going for it all. I'm going for Taco Bueno's massive lineup of 99 cent burritos. Six different burritos, just 99 cents each. Excuse me, sir. I'm on my way to try their new bacon and cheese burrito. Gee, I wonder if the second half has started yet. He graduated from college at 13, and he got his first computer at 18 months. You were walking by a radio shack. Actually, um, I was a stroller at that point. On the next Donahue, what's childhood like for these genius kids? Advanced evolutionary biology. It's a pretty fun course. They're gifted. They're talented. You're really a little Steven Spielberg, but they're still just kids. Meet genius kids. I was accepted into Mensa when I was four years old. On the next Donahue, tomorrow at 10 a.m. on Channel 4. Good evening, everyone. Let's take a quick look at it. 60 and 53 for our highs today. The clouds stayed in, but they have finally started to disappear. 87 and 20, the record temperatures. Just a little bit of rain in Dallas at this hour. Clear skies at DFW, 55 degrees. Temperature falling in the north wind, 3028. The pressure is holding steady. Fort Worth, whoa, look at this, 49, 86%. Northwest at 6, 30, 30, and the pressure is holding steady. Temperatures around the area are falling quickly with those clear skies. Very dry air to the west of us, 45 at this hour. Out in Abilene, and we'll see our temperatures tonight drop into the mid to lower 40s around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Let's fly down and take a look at Gordon. That's the big topic of conversation leaving DFW across New Orleans. High pressure ridge still in place. Gordon is still moving to the north and northwest, gradually shifting to the north. We'll fly right down through. I think it'll come in right around Tampa Bay, someplace between Sarasota and Tampa, and then move across the, straight, the state toward Daytona Beach and back out to the coast. Have not had a storm out there since 1960 that's taken that path. That was Donna. Did a lot of damage. In the meantime, a lot of rain in South Florida. Of course, that tornado touched down tonight near Miko, which is just uh, north of Sebastian on the East Coast. Did quite a bit of damage, and unfortunately, one person lost their lives. It's blowing and raining in Florida. Here's a look at, once again at the radar loop of the storm. A lot of rain being pulled across the peninsula. And of course, that'll just reverse when the storm moves across. Cold front is going to gradually move into the Florida panhandle and the southeast and turn stationary. 25-7 north, 82-6 west, moving north-northwest at 5. Maximum winds about 50 miles per hour, and that is not going to change very much. So it looks like that storm is going right across 
the Florida Peninsula. Here's a look at the five-day forecast, and I see about 65 for tomorrow. Cloudy skies on Thursday, 69. Thunder showers back Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But a nice turkey day. Thank you. You You're too. Welcome. We're in the midst of an angel explosion everywhere. Angels are the centerpiece of a popularity explosion. Tonight in part two of my special report, Believing in Angels, a look at society's attempts to humanize spiritual beings they don't fully understand. At Christmas time, there are angels everywhere, from the tops of trees to tags on gifts. We expect to find angels in churches and cemeteries, but today we're also seeing them in some very unexpected places. This is CBS. I believe that God helps you every way he can, but at the end, you have to be in charge of your life. And that's what I like about these angels. They don't have a magic wand. Uh, usually we, we describe angels in such a way as to disarm them, to take away the fear, uh, to bring them more to our level. I told you I'm...